Today, I will be taking the easiest level in all of Geometry Dash and turning it into an absolute monstrosity. The easiest difficulty in Geometry Dash is automatic, and the most popular automatic level is called Autoplay Area. This level is over 9 years old and has over 37 million downloads, which means that it's probably considered as the easiest level according to the most people. I will do a quick playthrough, and once I complete it, I will literally make it harder than Slaughterhouse. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but I will definitely make it extremely difficult. Here we go, this is Autoplay Area by Jax, the most popular auto level of all and the second created auto level that was rated. I don't actually know why it's that popular, is it a part of the map packs? Is it? No, it's not. Because there's literally no auto levels in the map packs. Then why is this- why is this level so popular? You can see that I already completed it, but that's when I went for all the auto levels. I can guarantee you that I don't remember what this looks like at all. This is like- this is gonna be exactly like the first time witnessing it. So I'm gonna play it, do a quick review, and then see how I can super buff it. Let's do this. We start as a cube, which I believe we're gonna be playing as for the most of the level. So far it was a mixture of mostly cube and a little bit of ship. There seems to be a lot of jump pads in this. I'm probably just gonna turn every jump pad into a timing because they're really seems to be a lot of them. And same for gravity portals, I think I could make them into like timings. Maybe add a bunch of orbs into them and a bunch of spikes that you can potentially crash into, yeah. It's just a mixture of pads and portals right now. So then you have a mixture of cube and ship with a lot of pads and a lot of portals in a tight corridor. I don't know how I'm gonna design all this. And then we finish the level off with falling down the stairs. I've done that in real life before. Okay, so this was autoplay area by Jax. Oh, what? I no clipped it, excuse me? Well, I already beat it, so it doesn't really matter. Now I'm gonna copy this level and make it into something extreme. Okay, let's begin. The beginning is free. I don't wanna make it free. I'm gonna add an extended triple spike right here to welcome us as we enter the level. What I wanna do here is I don't wanna I don't wanna make this free. I'm gonna like move this to like the side a little bit and then make a pink orb here, which you have to time just correctly to be able to survive this. And then once you land on this pad, I don't wanna make this pad just a regular one. I'm gonna make it a gravity one. Then I wanna place another pink orb here and a gravity orb right here. Here. So you have to click this one and then time this one to fall into the portal successfully. And then it's gonna look like this. There we go. That's how I imagined it. What are we gonna make next? This is a free part. Like, it's just falling down the stairs. I don't want this part to be free. So what I'm gonna do is place a fake spike right here. And then I'm gonna make the cube jump from this orb onto this orb so that it lands over here. And then I will make it go down with a black orb. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. So this should now be possible. I'm just gonna test it real quick if it actually is. Next part, this still looks too free for my taste. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this with uh, with a half block, and then I'll remove these pads entirely. I'm gonna add a red orb here, and I'm just gonna test it real quick. Okay. Like this, it's doable, and that's great news, because we've got a long way to go, and I'm glad that up to this point it's still possible. So now what I'm gonna do is replace these pads with gravity ones, and then make the entire top of the level spiky. So now you're not allowed to go all the way to the top, but I will add spikes on the bottom here as well. And I'm gonna make the player time a blue orb to not land on the spikes. Actually, I just extend this gap a little bit like this. And then, oh my God, I have so many ideas right now. And then make this spiked as well as this, as well as this. And then there's gonna be a gravity orb here. And then there's gonna be a pink orb that you have to time for to land on this right here. This is far too free again. I'm gonna add a smaller spike up here and then a small spike down here as well. And I'm gonna make the player use another pink orb on this block. So now you have to jump over this into that block. And this part I have a really cool idea for. I'm gonna place a red orb here that the player has the time to make it through this little gap. And then I'll move this one a bit further up and use another black orb here that you have to use to fall onto this and still make it into the corridor. Now for this corridor, I thought of something really, really cool. I'm gonna put a wave portal here and make it small like this. And then I'll spam a bunch of, which blocks were they again? Was it D blocks? Well, yeah. And then I'll place a spike right here that the player has to get through. You have to like make a super small click here to not die to the spike. Rather than falling down here, I'm gonna make you jump off of this platform. You have to jump off this edge just in time to hit the green orb. I'm gonna make this portal into a, into a blue one and place this inside of it. So you have to time it so that you land inside of this and then successfully make it down here. But that's not gonna happen without spamming a bunch of saw blades everywhere, right? Because saw blades are what makes levels cool, isn't it? And now we are at our first ship part. And since I'm Alias who likes to experiment with stuff, I'm gonna make this ship part 
into a not so ship part. I'm gonna make it into a wave. So now what you have to do, you have to wave across this corridor while switching gravity, but not once. You're gonna swap it three or four different times. You have to navigate through all these corridors as the wave without dying. Right, so then we have this part. What do I do here? I think I'll just make this into a one large jump. So I'll place the small spike at the end of this, and then big spikes on these, and then I think if you time it just right, you jump over all of these onto the pad. And then I'll also make the player time this pad as well by making this spiked and this spiked as well. So I'll place maybe a pink orb right here so that you can like use it to jump and then hit the pad late so you don't crash into the spike. Okay, I think this looks pretty okay so far. And then we have these three orbs that you don't have to click at all. And I don't like seeing stuff that is useless in a level, like they have no use. So I'm gonna give them a use. I'm gonna remove this yellow orb and place the red one down here. So the player has to time it to make it into this gap. But this gap looks pretty impossible. So I'm gonna remove one of these. And then the player should be able to just jump across it onto the pad. Okay, after a bit of tweaking, I can say that we've made a very good level so far, and we are 22% through, so we don't have that much left to go, but still quite a long way. Now, when you go through this corridor, you land up here on this pad, which I personally don't quite like, so I'm gonna remove the entirety of it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a blue orb down instead to make you fall down here but I'm gonna make it timeable so you have to press it so that you don't die on this spike. This is gonna make for a really hard obstacle, but I'm not feeling sorry for anyone that's gonna try this. And then instead of going up, I'm gonna have you go down. So when you touch the pad, you jump up, but as you're jumping up, you have to press this so you go down instead. And I'll make this here as well. So you land on the bottom side of the platform and then you have to jump across it. And I'm gonna make a gravity pad down here to make you fall down directly on this. Okay, then what? Then you're at the at the lower pad. So I don't I don't think we really need any of this. I'm gonna remove this and make the player do a bunch of jumps instead. And since I'm an evil person, as the player jumps across these little spikes here, I'm gonna put a bunch of direction portals above them for some extra fun. If the player still manages to pass this direction portal torture, then I have something else for him. I'm gonna place a wave portal here, and I'm gonna make it small, so that you're gonna have some extra fun flying through this very, very tight corridor. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this and replace it with a red orb. So you jump extra high. No, actually, I'm gonna place a pad here, like at the very end, and then I'll make the, the player time it to land inside of this corridor. Okay, then we have a very, very small corridor, only one block wide. And my plan for this is to put a gravity orb here that the player has to press to switch gravity, because once you fall out of it, there's gonna be spikes that kill you. And then I'll place... Probably this here, and a saw blade to jump over right here. So now when the player switches gravity here, they fall up and then they have to time this to land back into this portal. Next is an auto part. You know what? I'm gonna keep this part B because I feel like the player deserves a little break here. So I'm just not gonna change anything. This is the break time part. Enjoy your liberty while you're able to. Okay, this part is actually too long to be a free part. So I'm only gonna make the first part of it free. The first part means these portals and these portals and these portals. I'm gonna make this free, but this is not gonna be free. We need some better decoration. I'm gonna place monsters all over the ground. Since this is a monstrosity, it would be appropriate if we had some monsters laying around, don't you agree? You know what? I, I, don't, I don't think we're gonna make any of this. I think we're gonna change this part entirely. If we left this one completely still, we're gonna change this one entirely. No more gravity portals, no more jump pads, no more nothing. So how exactly are you meant to survive this again? This arrow makes you switch gravity, correct? So what I'm gonna do is place a bunch of them like so, and now we have a column of arrows that launches you directly into the monsters that I just made. My favorite number is five, so I'm gonna copy paste this five times to make five columns of arrows. Next, I'll make another column of arrows, but I'm gonna flip them, and then I'll make another five columns of this. I think you can already see where this is going. I'm gonna make another column of arrows repeating itself in a pattern that nobody is going to ever enjoy.
So if the player somehow survives this, then I'm gonna give him a small safe spot on the ground. So this is not gonna be covered in spikes. It's gonna be covered in these instead. I swear, this is literally becoming the new Silent Club. This this looks exactly like if Silent Club was made in 2.1. This pad looks way too free. I'm gonna add a spike on it, the smallest spike possible, and I'm gonna make the player time a yellow pad to land on the edge of this one without touching the spike. I, I don't like the fact that this one is free as well. I'm gonna make it not so free. What if we don't land on this one, but land on this one instead, and just remove this gravity thing entirely? And then I'm gonna build another spiky pillar right over here. The player is already confused from all the direction portal shenanigans that they're not gonna even see this orb, so they're gonna need some time to get used to it to pull off this timing successfully. Okay, but then we have another pad jump. Well, I've got an idea, all right. Boom, traffic lights. We all love them. And then this next part. This looks so empty and has a lot of jump pads. I don't know what to do with all of these. What I could do is place a saw blade above each and every single one of them. And then a wall of them at the end, because everyone enjoys a good wall of saw blades. And then what I can do is place these things here, so that the player doesn't bounce too far up to hit the saw blades, but instead they have to time this purple orb to fall onto the gravity pad at the exact angle not to hit the saw blade. This is a great auto level. This is the best auto level in the entire game. No no doubt in my mind. Okay, I did a little bit more tweaking, and I can say we're on a very good path to making this a hard level. We're over halfway through, actually. Now, after this, what I'm thinking of doing is the player shouldn't just be able to fall down here, because what would that look like? Instead, I'm gonna make him switch gravity once again to try to jump over these saw blades. It might move this one a little bit further down here. So you land on this platform and you time this orb to jump across the saw blade. This looks too free. I'm gonna extend this by quite a bit because we wanna be able to, you know, test the player's skills. And I think this level has way too many platforms, so I'll just remove them all and replace them all with orange orbs. There we have it. Now you have to perform the exact click pattern with these red orbs to be able to make it into this little gap. We are two thirds of the level through and we are falling down the stairs again. What I I think every level needs is more pads. So I'll place a pad on every single one of these. And now we have a set of black orbs. So each of these black orbs has to be timed at the exact rate so that the player is able to make it across these platforms. And after this, what happens next? I'm gonna put a bunch of fake blocks in here and cover them up with their 3D counterparts. No one's ever gonna suspect this. And then the player falls down here into a pit of spikes. I'm gonna put a yellow pad here that you have to save yourself from by clicking this red orb just at the right time not to land inside these spikes. And then you possibly end up landing on this platform. There we go. This is more like what I call a good level. Okay, and here is gonna be the hardest part of this level. First off, I'm gonna make this completely on auto, which means I'm gonna remove all of the gravity pads. And what I'm gonna do next is, so you can see at the beginning there's a ship part, but I don't want this whole corridor to be exclusively ship. I'm gonna make it switch from ship to something else, and that something else is gonna be the wave. So we are going to be flying through this corridor and occasionally switching to the wave and then from wave to ship and so on and so on. Okay, I have made this entire part all alternate between ship and wave game mode. And then the reason I made this part still auto is because I'm gonna add spikes to both the top and the bottom. I'm gonna make this part a bit more possible now. I'm gonna add big portals where necessary. I'm gonna add small portals where necessary. And I'm obviously gonna add a bunch of spikes everywhere because that's what we do on the Alias channel. We play spikes. I have to say, whoever decides to try this, good luck with this merciless gap right there. No one's gonna pass this. And then we only have this last part left to go. And there's no better way of ending this level than making the cube part into a robot, just like I did in a few videos back. And now this whole part has to be done with the robot game mode instead of the cube. And in this part, this doesn't need any ground. Ground is completely unnecessary in our lives. I'm gonna make the robot jump from here all the way into this little gap. After this, I'll make a bunch of gravity orb shenanigans like so and so, and then I'll place a spike at the end of this so you can't just land on it. You have to press both the gravity orbs. and then. And instead of a yellow pad here, I'm gonna add a red orb or orange orb. I don't know what color this is. 
you guys tell me what color this is because I don't know, I might be colorblind. And then we literally have the exact same pattern of obstacles repeating itself all the way to the end. So we really have to get creative with this one. I haven't used the ball game mode yet. So we're gonna add a ball at the end. Apparently you roll straight down these blocks and now place this and this. So we got a spiky part here that you have to time and then place a bunch of spikes on the ground as well. Boom, now we got a great ball part ahead of us. And then this green orb is gonna save you by launching you up onto this block. And that that marks the end of the ball part. So I'm just gonna do this. Maybe add some spikes here and there, like so. And then this part's done. I gotta test it though, to see if it's even possible. And then for this part, there's a trick with the robot called the super jumping. If you land in front of a gravity pad and press the mouse button just at the right time, you're gonna get launched super high up in the air and basically land somewhere around here if we're looking for this pad. And to make matters worse, I'm gonna spam direction portals here as well. So even if you do make the jump, you're not gonna know if you landed it until you're actually at the end of it. There is no limits to my possibilities. I can do whatever I want with this level because we're super buffing it after all, right? And then here we have another direction portal. I'm gonna remove the gravity portal off of it. There we go, and replace it with an orb. You're probably gonna have to do another robot jump here into the orb and then time it so that you don't land on these. You see where I'm going with it. And then we're once again falling down the stairs. But you know what I've decided? It would be better if we did some exercise and actually climb up some stairs. Like so, this is gonna be our daily exercise routine. So now what the robot has to do is jump off of this on this pad exactly under the right angle to make it across this into the end of the level. So this is the level we have now. I'm gonna do some tinkering with it because I don't think it's entirely optimized, but sooner or later it's gonna be, and in the end, I'm gonna show a bot of footage of it to see what it's really like. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is autoplay area super buffed, which I'm gonna title extreme play area. This level is now going to be uploaded to the servers with a secret way at the beginning, and whoever manages to complete it first wins $50 plus the chance to be in the video with me. I am just about to post the level and begin the competition. The rules are simple. You simply have to beat it the way I showed it in the video, the way it was botted. So there we go. If you want to be the first one to beat this, make sure to start practicing right now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.